this fest is the best. Yeah, this fest is the very best. Yeah, that's right. Might have heard best, but this fest, yeah, first, yeah, the best. Oh, it's the very best. Hi, my name is Bonnie Bliss. I am introducing Bliss Fest in our live um, green screen workshop. This is the first time this is featuring. We'll also have Steve Wright talking about his career in Hollywood and his special effects. And we will have Mark Rader and we will be showing Fire Ripples and The Road Baby. Thank you. I'm Mark Rader. Welcome to the live Cine Ripple green screen behind the scenes FX workshop. We're going to show a couple of wild short films real quick. Then we're going to take you behind the scenes of Fire Ripples and the Low Road Baby with key cast and crew. And then we're going to do a live green screen workshop. We're going to need brave uh, audience volunteers when we do that. You'll get to hang from a bridge, walk through fire. Um, and then what we're going to do is after all this, we'll, do a, we'll have a Steve Wright will come up and tell you about his um, FX experience on big Hollywood films. And then we'll close with a short film called Alone um, by Tori Van Buskirk that'll blow you away. Thanks for coming to Bliss Fest. You're on live TV. Let's roll the films. She's mine! No! She's mine! She's my baby! She's my wife's baby! No! She's my baby! Aren't you, Layla? Branches. It got me. Trees have feelings too. But one day, Mr. Tree will be bigger and stronger than you. Seven more legs, he'll be fine. Oh. Six. You are a monster. How would you like to be crippled? It, look, don't overreact. It's not like he's human. Besides, that insect interrupted a romantic moment between the two of us. You are ugly to me right now. Would you rather have that spider than me? You know I'm an animal lover. How could you do that to me? It's not like I killed it. And I'll be more considerate, all right? Thank you. 
Are you the crippler? Yeah. Tell me more. I got a strict moral code. I don't believe murder is right under any circumstance, but sometimes people need to be punished. And that's where I come in. I ain't no killer. I'm the crippler. I no longer have the use of my legs. He did this to me. And then he disappeared. He needs to be punished. Adriana, I'm sorry, okay? I can't live with myself anymore. I ran away that night because I didn't want to go to jail. Why not? It's safe there. I'll call the police for you. I can't live without you. I didn't want to hurt you. Just get out of here. Look, I want to live with you. I want to take care of you. I promise I won't hurt any more insects. Even if it's for self-defense. Not even a fly, not even an ant. I love you. I need you. Okay. Come in. Wait in my room. Listen, I've got to cancel. I can't go through with it. It's not right. I, I don't want to cripple Brad. The money is all yours. I, I don't care. Do whatever you want to. Go take a vacation, okay? But job is canceled. Can you help me get into bed? Yes. Feel that? Mm -mm. What about this? There's still a lot we can do. I forgive you, baby. I thought I heard something. Oh my God! No!
How long can you hold your breath, Ivan? Chill it. Eat your meat, Ivan. Then you can have ice cream. Trying to unlock what lies dormant in your mind, Ivan. You see, the P Cowie 9, if my theory is correct, and it is, should eat into your brain and drag out the extrasensory ability which lies dormant within it. Don't you feel anything, Ivan? Try an experiment. Try moving your fork without touching it. Congratulations, Ivan. You've broken through the barrier. I don't want to overfeed you. Besides, if uh, my discovery kills you, I won't have anybody to play with. <gasps> Ivan, I'm a vegetarian. You do realize this raises the stakes. Ivan, no! No dessert for you, Ivan. You're not gonna turn the tables on me.
Hi, I'm Mark Rader. Thanks for watching. We raised the stakes. I hope you ate before you saw the meat man because I'd hate to ruin your appetite. I wrote, directed, and edited these demented films. I'm an escape mental patient in fire ripples with a paranormal ability to control fire. My rage lights things on fire. Doctors chase me because they're afraid I'll set the world on fire. Rage burns, fire ripples, and love heals. That's the idea. Now, how did we pull that off? Here to show you our low road baby stunt coordinator, Eddie Portuguese. Eddie, why don't, why don't you come on up? Um, fire ripples, visu visual effects guy, Brad Burroughs, who's working behind the scenes here. Uh, pyrotechnician, Jim Milligan, co-producer and production designer, Evelina Castillo, and the star of the Low Road Baby, Audrey Walters, and camera assistant, Tim Nolte. Come on up. Um, I don't know. Yeah. They deserve a big hand. They made this happen. I don't know how we could have pulled off these ambitious shorts without these talented geniuses. They'll take you behind the scenes into their creative worlds. Then Brad Burroughs presents a live green screen workshop. We're going to need live vi um, Brave Audio volunteers come up here, hang with us from a bridge, and walk through fire. Um, we'll just hold off on the questions till the end of this question, the Sin Ripple section, then we'll do a live Q&A. And then Steve Wright will talk about his experience on big movies like Shutter Island, Ray, Ali, Traffic, um, and Batman and Robin. Hey guys, Vadim Elkin here with a behind the scenes look at the making of Fire Ripples, a new short film by Mark Rader. I was one of the camera operators on this film, working again with the cinematographer David Quakenbush. Although I was not on set during most of principal photography, I got the opportunity to assist David and operate one of the cameras for the film's key stunt action sequences, as well as to help out with shooting background visual effects plates and elements involving live fire and rain. This was a really fun project, especially getting to see the acclaimed Hollywood stunt professionals at work. While on the set, I got a chance to shoot some behind-the-scenes footage, so here it is. Hey Paul, yeah. you're ready to do a dry run. Okay guys. And then I burst right about here.
one. Faster on the flicker. There you go. Good, thank you. Action! who trained actors on the Low Road Baby to narrowly avoid drivers, um, precision stunt drivers, on, 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 on Fire Ripples, he worked with Ted Batchelor, who holds the Guinness Book of World Records for coordinating the most full body burns at one time and for the longest run on fire. And we set them both on fire. Here's Eddie. Thanks, Mark. Um, so I don't know uh, which film we're going to show first, but I just have a short of uh, some behind-the-scenes footage, uh, additional stuff about fire ripples and the actual prep for the body burn, and then some um, progression work on Low Road Baby on how we got to do some of the stunts on that. So this is the Low Road Baby, so you'll see some, some footage um, of the cars moving on the green, you know, at the uh, parking lot where the green screen was set up and how we progressed into uh, creating the big truck hit for Heath. Action. We're 
set. Action. <laughs> Ted and I to do full body burns of course he coordinated it along with his wife um, and Ted has hundreds of body burns so uh, this was my first time Everybody ready? Ready. Go. Fire. Up. You're up. Both up. Way up. Go down, go down. So it, um, it took us uh, probably 90 minutes to two hours to kind of just kind of take our time and prep and get ready to actually do the burn. And then you can see the burn didn't take very long at all. But it all, it all happened very quickly. Um, but everything prep-wise went well. And, of course, both of us walked away safely without any injuries, which is the whole purpose of doing stunts correctly and successfully. So, All right, thanks. Uh, on the low road, baby, it was out of the budget to close down a highway. So Evelina Castillo, co-producer and art director, designed a bridge in her backyard that was bigger than a house. Thank you. My name is Evelina Castillo. Um, when the ma director of the Laurel Baby came to me, but he don't have anything ready. <laughs> I ended up scouting locations and doing uh, designs for him and tried to find out the cheaper way to do it. So I said, let's do it in the backyard. And it was a little smaller than my back, than my house. <laughs> but it was, it was like 18 inches long and six inches, I mean, six feet wide, 18 feet long. Our director designed a bridge in her backyard that was bigger than a house. Designed a forest of trees to perfectly match a Fair Play Colorado shot. She coated the trees with a secret ingredient so we could bring them to the fire training center in Lakewood and burn them over and over again. And I want to introduce Jim. He's an amazing guy to contact for your films. He knows what he's doing. Here he is. Thank you very much. I've been in the effects business now for about 18 years, um, and it doesn't matter whether it's a lower budget film or a higher budget film. Um, a lot of the same processes have to be followed. Uh, you still end up working together with your stunt guys. You work together with the art department to make everything come together. And still, as you saw there, even in the small clip of the safety meeting, um, we had to get a lot of permits, permissions, fire department there. Um, it was a, you know, a really fun experience for everybody, including we had a lot of weather problems. Uh, we actually had real rain roll in on it. Um, a, a lot of things, um, when you make a film, you have to plan for extra time because even if you think you've got everything covered, something will come up. And uh, it was just uh, <laughs> quite the day to put that all together. Um, I work with a crew of guys along with Ed, who has a crew of guys with him, that long before we get there, we have to sit down many times and go over what's going to happen. And 
because again, low budget or high budget, you never want anybody to get hurt. Like I explained there, it should not be that scary when you're there. It should only look that way on film. So, um, who else do I need to hand this down to? Mark? Get back to the yeah. boss. Thanks, Jim. Fire Ripples won the Indie Film Award of Recognition for Special Effects Non-Animation. So you're on fire. Um, <laughs> then um, well, we'll go into the go into other effects in a little bit. But right now, we're going to pass it over to the star of the Low Road Baby, Audrey Walters. Well, I don't think I was the star, but <laughs> I think she's the star. <laughs> um, this was just such a fun film to do with, with a great group of people. Um, you know, with doing, doing the stunts was, I, I'd never done that before, running in between um, cars that were moving. And um, Eddie, I have full confidence in him. You know, he did it first and showed me how to do it, and then we did it together. And then he, he left me to myself to do it. <laughs> and, um, and you know, I, you j I gained uh, trust from all the drivers that, um, that were driving all the cars. And, um, and then um, David Quakenbush would say, can you, can you just cut it a little closer? Can you cut it a little closer? <laughs> so, you know, but, but I did feel completely comfortable and had full <laughs> confidence and it was just really fascinating. And then I was in awe of her bridge that she made. It really was, and it looked amazing. And then we went to the actual bridge that she t had taken pictures of, and the, it looked identical to the replica that she had made in her backyard. It was incredible. So um, anyway, these guys were a lot of fun, and um, we had a good time. <laughs> yeah, it, she got the bridge down to every other, every rusty detail. Yeah. And. Um, um, and let's hear from uh, Tim Nolte. Hi, uh, I'm Tim Nolte, and I was an assistant camera operator on uh, Fire Ripples and The Low Road Baby. And I know what you're thinking. They, they dug pretty deep into the bench warmers if they, if they got me up there to talk. Uh, certainly, uh, David Quakenbush and, uh, and Christopher Adrian uh, would have a lot to say about how this happened. Sadly, they were unable to be here. Um, David Quakenbush was our director of photography, uh, and Christopher Adrian was uh, the post-production supervisor. Uh, but there are some things to say about how to make the effects happen, especially from an assistant camera operator's point of view, uh, because really what I am is a, a camera technician when I'm operating that capacity. And so I really need to know a lot about how the camera behaves and how to set it properly. And that's really important when you're doing uh, post-production effects like green screen and compositing and things like that. Uh, and so it was really important for me to understand what Christopher Adrian had in mind and then set the camera um, so that we were getting the cleanest shots possible. And uh, so th that's that's a super important uh, portion of doing this. Uh, the, the funny joke is always, well, let's fix it in post. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're shaking their heads over here. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, obviously there are a lot of things that happen in post when you're doing a film like this that's very effects heavy. But if you don't shoot it right to begin with, it's going to be a disaster. And we're going to get to see a lot of what you need to do to shoot it right, shoot it right with the uh, green screen demo over here in a little bit. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, it's good. Everyone on the on the set works so hard. Like Tim Nolte, you know, it's good to hear from from Tim to get to get that the the point of view. You know, um, like fire, fire ripples. We had a lot a lot of groups dragging heavy equipment up and down a dark hill all night, dark and smoky hill. Um, um, anyway. Um, what we'll do now is we'll we'll go on to talk about we Jim talked about the special effects then we're going to give it to Brad here who did the the visual effects and um, Fire Rebels just won a visual effects award a Bliss award for that um, Bliss Fest it's Bliss Fest three 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 plus three plus three equals nine and Fire Rebels has won nine awards now um, amazingly so. That was my goal. No, just joking. That, that was awesome. Anyway, Brad Burroughs is here to bring you a live green screen demonstration. So, Brad, 
Yeah, do do your thing. So, can I get a volunteer? Uh, yes, you. Uh, awesome. You're wearing blue. Good. Uh, go up against the green screen. You're already halfway there. You never want to wear anything green on against the green screen or blue against the blue screen. Otherwise, you're not going to get much of a uh, shot at it. Now, if I could have you move to the left a little bit. Uh, other left. Other left just a tick. Perfect. Now I'll go ahead and start the background here. Yeah, what do you think? So, yeah, uh, well, I'll just have to uh, hang on a second, adjust the camera. So, yeah, now you kind of look like you're uh, hanging from a bridge. The, let's change the background. Uh, Just don't bump it. Now you're on fire. <laughs> oh, wow, with the baby. Awesome. Yeah, but anyway, I'd like to talk a little bit about the technical aspects of this. Uh, now, the, now, as Tim was talking about, making sure that you have your shot already set up uh, before you actually get it is absolutely the most important thing right now. You also got to think about lighting when you're lighting a green screen. You want to get it nice and flat. You want to make sure that you have the, uh, a, a good contrast between the subject or the actor or actress in front of the green screen versus the background. And of course, uh, software like Adobe Ultra, I don't think they make that much anymore. Uh, they make it that much anymore. Uh, that's always good to have if you're going to go ahead and do uh, you know, just a live composite. So that way you can take it into di uh, to, uh, you know, After Effects or another uh, digital compositing uh, program later. Now what you want to do is you always want to just, uh, well, you want to just uh, tweak stuff around here and there. Uh, play around with it until you get the uh, right key. I mean, notice I'm sliding this uh, here. It's just messing with stuff, changing, the as or changing certain aspects of the shot. Uh, there are a lot of, a lot of different uh, software options out there for you. Okay, let's see. I think what we're going to do, Brad, that's, a, that's about a, that's what you were, that's, that's, you're done with the green screen presentation for the most part? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, uh, talk, or did you want to talk more about the visual effects? Well, uh, I did also work visual effects on uh, Fire Ripples. Uh, actually worked uh, in uh, both uh, production and post-production. Um, was one of those people hauling all that stuff up and down that hill like uh, Jim was talking about earlier. Let me get into the light. <laughs> what, and what, what's your name up there? All right. Tatiana. Yeah, thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, Tatiana. You're, you're on fire. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, the uh, post-production process, uh, yeah, if it hadn't been for Tim, Tim we would have had a really uh, hard time with it. Uh, you know, uh, but basically what we did is we went ahead, uh, I did a lot of the green screen work or blue screen work, the chroma key work on there. Uh, there are several shots that were shot on a blue screen uh, where we kind of messed up a little bit. I had to fix that up. Uh, heck, there was this one shot I was working uh, on the production crew, hadn't even been tapped for post-production, right? I was thinking to myself, man, I'd hate to be the poor uh, guy that was working on the shot. I could queue it up for you. Eh, maybe not. But I'd hate to be the poor guy working on the shot afterwards, right? Because there was just uh, tape visible from the black uh, the black screen that we built uh, long story short I wound up working on it <laughs> so there was that uh, let's see what else um, yeah I just worked underneath Chris Adrian oh uh, you have a question Ivan ah king out the green yeah. well uh, it's uh, it can be a really difficult process depending on the quality of footage you have I've worked on a couple of films where they didn't have the best quality footage. Um, you get all sorts of distortions and grain with the uh, bad footage, right, that you have to work around. I mean, a well, good workaround for that is uh, to, use a, uh, <clears throat> to use a still photograph in the background, add a little bit of grain to that to match the grain in the foreground. Um, you really got to be versatile, though, with this. Uh, you got to be able to think on your feet because it is, uh, can be a really hard job. To do co color keying and such. Any more, co any more questions? 
And, and um, uh, just now or for uh, uh, Fire Ripples? Oh, for the show? Uh, this is Adobe Ultra. It's sort of, uh, it's been discontinued. Uh, it's the best I could do on uh, short notice and a limited budget, but uh, I think it did a decent job. Personally, I prefer to use After Effects. Uh, you use uh, Key Light and After Effects, that's the best way to do it. If uh, anybody's interested, I could go ahead and uh, see what I can do with uh, some footage I've got lying around on my computer. Or no. All right, cool. And then, um, let's see. Um, Eddie Portuguese is about to leave. So uh, does anybody have any questions for Ed about these stunts? Okay. Well, what we're going to do now, one of those questions was by Ivan Pavletic, who was an actor in um, The Low Road Baby. Um, he um, is the father. <laughs> well, he's not really the father, but... Heath was the father, but he he was fighting for the baby because he wanted Audrey. Ivan, if you have anything to say, why don't you come up and say, and then we'll and you can take Eddie's spot. He has to go, and then we're going to open up the floor for a, some quick questions and wrap everything up. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Ivan Pavlovich. I was one of the actors on uh, Laura Baby and. Uh, helped out uh, on the process of uh, trees on uh, fire ripples. So, uh, uh, yeah, and, uh, I've had experience with, uh, dealing with Bradley already on uh, green screens from my previous movie, 476 AD, which has been going on for production for about three, four years now. Uh, so we have been uh, we spend days and nights on dealing with uh, countless and countless and countless of <coughs> countless images of uh, uh, green screens of all kinds of stuff. What Bradley said, uh, keying out, which is sort of a pain in the neck, and so that's that, I guess. Wrap things up. We'll do a, a quick Q&A. Anybody have any questions for anybody? Okay, if there are no more questions, you guys have any questions? <laughs> oh, yeah, Tim has a question for Brad. All right. Uh, yeah. So what you got for me, Tim? So, Brad, um, you mentioned that you had some shots in, was it Fire Ripples or Low Road Baby? Uh, that, Fire Ripples. That I, were difficult, that were challenging. Yeah. You could describe briefly what the problems were and what would have helped when they were shot to fix them. Like what could have been done better? Well, uh, one of the shots that comes to mind is a pickup shot we did in Evelina's backyard uh, where David Quackenbush was uh, DPing and everything else. There's this one shot where uh, Maggie and Mark's hands are actually outside of the green screen. I had to clean that up using uh, track mats on uh, After Effects. Um, or uh, let's see, what else can you do? Or there's also another shot, uh, well, different techniques to clean it up, make it look good. I mean, the one shot I actually had to take into Photoshop to erase all the tape, the one I was talking about earlier. So that was a pretty difficult one to take care of. Um, what else? Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, the shot that we were talking about earlier, uh, Megan and Mark's hands went off of the gr uh, blue screen, so I had to uh, cut that out uh, manually using the track mat just to make sure that it, uh, you know, was still in there. Well, it was in there correctly. The background was removed correctly. Yeah, I, I could stand a few elocution lessons. <laughs> so, um, yeah. On top of his question, what, what we used to do day and night with uh, the flickering, remember? And sometimes we had the blue screen and the green screen. Why don't you talk a little bit about how, how to fix the flickering on the hair? Oh, hair flicker. Exactly. Yeah, yeah you got to bring the mat down just a little bit. I mean, shrink it just a tick. And, of course, I use a two-layer process. I've got uh, uh, one layer, you know, after, of course, it's been chroma keyed out using key light and whatever. Uh, I've got one layer, which I use as a... Uh, uh, outline layer where it's a little bit uh, blurred. Then I have a second layer, which is a fill layer, which brings detail back into the uh, into the uh, subject on the screen. I wouldn't mind showing you that, and maybe at a later date I'll be able to. 
but uh, use a two-layer process. And then, of course, color grading, that's important. You've got to color grade uh, to make sure that the background matches the front, so that way it's a seamless, uh, you know, looks like a seamless shot, looks like it was done naturally. That's, that's my goal with every shot I uh, do when it comes to green screening and whatnot for film and television and cinema and whatnot. Okay, um, thanks for coming, everyone. Um, these are the guys that made this thing happen. I wrote a script. Uh, you know, I don't know if you guys, um, you know, if uh, if um, the um, uh, the hopefully the the message comes across. But these guys brought a raging forest fire to life. You know, and I'll come up with wacky ideas, um, a, a baby hanging off a highway on a bridge, and they make it happen. So. Thanks for coming. Um, what we're going to do now is take a break, and then we're going to hear from Steve Wright, who has years of visual effects um, experience on a lot of really um, big movies um, like uh, Batman and Robin, Ali, uh, Shutter Island, things like that. Okay, and cut. This fest is the best, yeah. This fest is the very best, yeah. That's right, everybody heard that, but this fest, yeah, first, very best, huh? Oh. It's the very best, yeah. This fest, this fest, very best. So turn the whoop around, let me hear bass. That's right, coming into your face with the mad-ass rhyme and the mad-ass dude, yeah. These films will get you grooving, that's right, we'll get you moving. DJ, I'll play that tune in. This fest, let go all night. This fest, that shit's heaven. 